Today we're going to unbox the Estes Super Orbital Transport. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox and find out what's inside the Estes Super Orbital Transport. Now the Orbital Transport is an old kit from the probably the 1970s or the early 1970s, somewhere in that area. Um, and this is a larger version. Let me show you the size of the original version so we can kind of get a comparison. So this was the original Orbital Transport and you can see that it has a little glider on it that's that comes off when the ejection charge goes off, that pushes out the parachute. This comes off and then it glides down to the ground. Um, so this should be a larger version and I have not opened this up, so I'd have no idea what's inside. So we're seeing it for the first time. And so I'm gonna pull it out. And yeah, I like to see a lot of parts. <laughs> Um, so you're going to get a lot of parts in this. So let's open this bag first. And inside of this we have body tubes. And these are... Okay, so this has a, has a little musty smell, but that's okay. Um, these are, these look to be BT55 size tubes, and I'm doing that from eyeball, just uh, guessing the size. Um, this is a 24 millimeter, or pretty close to it. Um, and this is a shorter version. These are made out of craft paper, which is, you know, the kind that cardboard boxes are made of. But this has been spiral wound around a mandrel and then given a coat of glassine that gives us this nice smooth surface finish that accepts glue really well. Um, so these tubes are nice and that's the typical Estes quality. Um, there's also a tube coupler probably because we're going to join two tubes together and you can see that fits inside there and that will probably be glued in there. Um, then we have two nose cones. And this looks like a brand new nose cone shape that I've never seen before from Estes. Um, this one I'm not so sure about. Um, let's check the fit on that. Oh, that's, that's a really nice fit. Um, it goes on with just a little bit of friction, but I know that uh, when the ejection charge goes off, it's gonna slide out really easy. Um, it doesn't have any ribs on the outside. Sometimes um, nose cones will have those ribs because the first time they made the nose cone, it didn't quit, quite fit the tube and they don't want to make a new mold. And so what they do is they cut in ribs to stiffen up the friction. But this one um, came out nice and smooth. And this one right here, also the same. That's a really nice smooth fit. Um, that's a nice shape on that nose cone. I really like it. Uh, also in here, we have the typical Estes elastic shock cord. This is quarter inch wide. Um, it's pretty long. It's got to be almost four feet long. Uh, the, the thing about elastic shock cords that I should mention is that you have to watch it as the kit gets older. So once you've built the rocket and it's been sitting on your shelf for maybe two years, um, the elastic will start to degrade, which means that it gets a little bit brittle. Um, instead of being stretchy, it may snap. Um, and so you would have to replace that. So just keep that in the back of your mind. But when it's new out of the box, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, also in here, did have some small parts and a parachute. So let me cut this open. Oh, lots of little parts falling out. I like it when I see a lot of parts. Uh, okay, so this right here is the warranty card and it also has launch site dimensions. So if you're unsure how big of a launch site you, you'll need when launching this, look at this um, and it gives you those specifications. Um, and if you don't have one of those, 
um, you can come to the Apogee website. Um, we actually have a little program called the Launch Visualizer, and it's at rocksim.com, and you can test fly your rockets on various engines. And uh, we do have an orbital transport in a rocksim file, uh, but we don't have the super one yet, but we will get that soon. Um, and then you can test it out in a launch visualizer and see what it looks like actually on your particular launch field. Because what it does is it takes an Earth with a map of the Earth and photographs of the Earth, you know, like aerial photos, so you can actually see your rocket flying on your launch site. So check that out. Uh, get this bag out of the way. Okay, so here we got more tubes, and there's four tubes, and I, I'm pretty sure I know what these are. These are going to be the simulated engine tubes for the jet engines that are on the back of the orbital transport. And you can't see that because the photo is probably not big enough. Um, again, um, these are craft paper tubes. Now this has a white outer wrap on it, uh, which I like a little bit better because if you have to draw a pencil line down it, it's a lot easier to see a pencil line on a white tube rather than a brown tube. Um, Okay, so this is a paper transition. This is made out of cardstock paper, so you'll cut that out. And um, this will probably be the nozzle on the little glider. So let me do a size comparison here. So here's the original orbital transport, and here's how much bigger the super orbital transport is. So this little piece will probably be, this is my best guess, will be that little um, simulated nozzle on the glider. There's no motor that goes into the glider. It just glides down. So um, that's just a simulated nozzle. Uh, so that looks pretty good. That's pretty typical. Um, you also have a number of engine rings um, or centering rings and launch lugs, two launch lugs. Um, one to actually launch the rocket, and then I'm sure it's going to be the 316. So you're going to need a 316 inch launch pad when you launch this rocket. And that's this big one right here. And then this smaller one will be used to hang the glider on the side of the rocket. Um, so these, um, I'm pretty sure that this rocket takes a 24 millimeter diameter engine. Oh, here, here on the side of the thing, they tell me how big this rocket is. It's 31.3 inches tall from the base to the tip. Um, let's see where they list the rocket motors. Um, they list one or two different rocket motors, uh, an Estes D125 or a C113. Both of those are 24 millimeter. So this is the engine tube. Um, this little black ring that goes over the top of it, um, that's used to hold down the engine hook. So the engine hook um, we'll go underneath it. I can't put it on all the way right now because the uh, it doesn't quite fit. Well, maybe I can do it like this. But actually, the that engine hook is going to go a little bit further aft, and this will go on top of it to hold it in place. And then these rings here are the centering rings to hold it inside the the body tube, like here. So you have two of those. Um, you have two of these rings. Um, they're also color-coded. Now, I'm not sure why there's two. I know one of them will be an engine block, but I'm not quite sure what the other one is. Maybe the other one goes probably inside the glider, probably as the back ring um, for that nozzle to go into. So, okay, so that's I'm guessing here, but I'm pretty sure that's probably going to be correct. Um, you also have clay. Um, this is nose weight. To trim the glider so once you build the glider it has to glide and it may or may not need nose weight to get it to fly nice and level for you um, so that's what that's for um, this little wood dowel um, on the original one the dowel was on the bottom of the the glider that uh, goes inside the um, this is going to be the hook um, so yeah, so that's that dowel right there. Um, here we have the parachute. Now why do we have a parachute when it's a glider? Well, the main part of the rocket does not glide. That comes down as uh, on a parachute and we can look at this parachute and you can see it's already got the, the lines already pre-attached 
which is a really nice feature that makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to build your rocket. Um, I'm going to open it up and let's see, this is a big size parachute. Um, ah, this is appears to be an 18 inch diameter parachute. Um, and you can see it's, it's nice and brightly colored. So you can see your rocket in the sky. Um, has the old Estes logo on it. Um, these are made out of poly, uh, low density polyethylene. Or, or, yeah, low density polyethylene, um, which is the same stuff that garbage bags are made. And it's pretty resilient. Um, it's pretty strong. It will stretch if you pull too hard on it. Uh, but for model rockets, it works great. Okay, other backpack bag. Okay, this has all the flat stuff in it. So the first thing that we see whoa, is the balsa wood sheets. And this is, looks to be 3 16th inch thick balsa wood. Um, and there's one, two, three, four, five sheets of balsa wood. So like I said, this one's got a lot of parts. Um, Estes calls this an expert level kit um, for Apogee components. We call it like skill level four um, because you will have to trim that glider and there's a lot of parts that need to fit in the right spots but you can see on their laser cut they're, they're cutting notches where the things are going to drop in um, like like this little fin right here has two notches on it i'm guessing that those two notches will go into these two slots right here on this particular wing um, you know you can see all these parts that go on here <laughs> there's a lot of parts okay so that's good balsa wood and it's all laser cut. So the laser cutting is, you know, what you want to see in a kit. Um, this right here, this is interesting. This is a piece of cardboard that's also been laser cut and it doesn't look like a part of the rocket. There's actually two of them. There's a big one and a small one. So my guess are these are assembly jigs to make sure that when you put everything together, everything is nice and square the way it should be so that your rocket flies nice and straight and predictable. So those are two assembly jigs and I love seeing that in kits. That tells me that they put a lot of thought into this kit to make sure that it goes together right. Um, these right here are the decals and this little piece of paper right here is just to protect them. Um, these are water slide decals, which means that you're going to cut them out, trim around, and then soak them in water, and then slide the pattern right onto the rocket. And the reason for water transfer is they're very thin, so they look a lot nicer on your rocket rather than sticker decals. Because on sticker details, decals, you can see that edge. Um, and so we have two sheets of water slide decals, and there's a lot of them to put on. Um, this rocket is, um, with all these decals, it's going to be really easy to decorate because it, it's only one color. You just only have to spray it white, and then you put on the decals, and you, then you get a nice colorful rocket. So that's the advantage of decals. And I'm just going to put these protective covers right back on, get them out of the way. And then finally, we have the instructions sheet here. And this is eight, oh, nope, 12 pages of instructions. So there's three sheets and there's four sh pages on each sheet for a total of 12 pages of instruction. And you can already see that these are very nicely illustrated. Um, Estes does a real good job on their instruction. There's not a lot of text. So if you need a step-by-step, play-by-play instruction, um, that's not what you get, but you get a lot of drawings. So if you can follow the drawings, um, it should be really simple to put this together. Um, like I said, I haven't put this particular kit together yet. So I had no idea what I'm getting into, but it looks pretty straightforward. 
I am going to be building it because here at Apogee Components, we build and fly all the kits that we sell um, so that we understand the same challenges that you will experience if you were to build this kit. So again, this is the super orbital transport, which means it's bigger version. This one, as I said, is 31.3 inches tall. Um, and it's a booster with a glider on the back end. You will find it here at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. So until the next video, may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.